God couldn't die. Because God is spirit, and the spirit don't have blood, and you can't kill God. The nature of God is divine. So in order for us to be redeemed, God sent prophets out to prophesy about his coming. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, the 35th chapter, your God will come. Hey everyone, before we continue through the content I provide you on this channel, I invite you to support a market for hard truths. Matthew chapter 9 verse 37 says the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. And in these last days, it costs time and money to sanction the unadulterated truth. If this ministry you feel has unveiled to you hard truths, support us with your giving. Thank you for supporting truth. Let's get back to it. Before I get started on Geno Jennings lying about the Godhead again, I want to address the deception of once saved, always saved apologists who claim that we do not trust in the work Christ did on the cross, but trust in our works to inherit salvation if we don't believe in once saved, always saved. This again is a lie from the pits of hell. Genesis chapter 15 verse 6 says Abraham by faith believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. So your, your boss accounts to you a paycheck. He credits to you a paycheck. Doesn't mean you own the company. Okay. The U.S. Constitution accounts or credits to you civil liberties. That does not mean that you get to make and break the laws of the land without consequence. Okay, you don't say to your boss, once hired, always hired. So why do they play this game with God? I mean, you don't, you don't say that to your boss because you don't own the company. But your boss does promise to, you, to pay you X, Y, and Z if you abide by the policy at work and you fulfill your duties, your end of the bargain at work. Now, the owner does not owe you a job. Okay, before the offer of employment is complete, he doesn't owe you anything, but he is obligated to pay you once you do the work. This is the same thing with God. He placed, he said in his word, he placed his word above his name and Christ purchased your life with his blood and even said the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few yet. It does not matter how hard you work. If you steal on the job or you're, uh, it's proven that you committed sexual harassment, etc. You see what I'm saying? This is why I say there are four pillars of salvation. Faith, grace, works, and repentance. Because unlike your boss, God will forgive you for any sin so long as you repent. But there are so many scriptures that suggest, uh, that imply that you must have the correct posture for death, which is why the Godhead is so important. Okay, again, if man never sinned, God would not have to save, which is Jesus Christ, means Savior, anointed Savior, one who saves. He would not have to have been sent as Savior if there is no sin. Where did Christ come from? Well, according to the scriptures, he always was, always has been, and always will be. He was, is, and is to come. And that is what makes him God. But because God must keep his word and he cannot be in the presence of sin, God himself had to be accursed from himself. And that's where we get the Godhead. When Christ, who is God, came in the flesh to redeem man, everything must be done in spirit and truth. That's what the word says. So God had a man obligation in the flesh while still keeping his uh, heavenly form. Okay. Now the scriptures say he's the firstborn. He receives a name. Christ receives a name above all names. He inherits a throne at the right hand of the father. Again, if sin was never a thing, all these things would never have to happen. The Holy Spirit is given to all whom are sealed to the day of redemption, because God said to Adam, once Adam fell, he asked Adam, where are you? Adam was always with God. 
so he didn't need to send his Holy Spirit to steal Adam to the day of redemption because God himself was walking with Adam. Adam could see God before he died to sin. He, had because, he died because of sin. On the day of judgment, at the mercy seat and those who are, are at the great white throne judgment, you will see Christ on a separate throne because he was literally separated from the Father because of the peril of sin. Again, we're talking about spirit and truth. God operates in spirit and truth, which represents his capacity as man on earth. So his throne in heaven still represents his capacity as man on earth because he will judge man because he was man. You got to remember the man part of God. You see that. What Geno Genesis is teaching is that everything Christ did just goes away, somehow goes. That's not spirit, spirit and truth. He's literally separating the man on earth from who God is. God is love, so his love was a sacrifice for sin. And all of that is represented in heaven. God is still performing in his capacity as man. The scriptures say he's the firstborn amongst all creation. Geno Jennings will say, well, God is never born. God never dies. And then he turns this into heresy. Much like Christ, the scriptures also say the apostles will judge the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, you cannot just topple the tower that Christ built. You cannot just magically throw away his work that he did as a sacrifice for our sins. And that's what Geno, again, is saying when he seems to represent God as one, which God is one, but he does not teach the intricacies, the consequences of sin. Yes, there is one God. That's not a debate. But when sin came into the equation, because God loves us so much, he had to do something that was out of his nature, which was to be separate from himself. You see that the scriptures say he despised the shame. In Hebrews chapter 12, he said he despised the shame. He didn't look forward to dying for our sins. That's why Christ said to the Father, if there be, be any other way, but not my will, let your will be done. So Christ had to battle in the flesh. And the scripture said he learned obedience through the things that he sacrificed. You see that? So yes, God had to learn as a man. He had to die as a man. Although he rose again, he had to be born as a man and he had an earthly birth and he, now he has a heavenly birth. And that's where this whole sitting at the right hand of the father thing comes into the whole equation. You see that? Okay. That's the tower he built. All right. Is there anything too hard for God? Is that not what the words say? Think about that. God having to time travel, come in the flesh as a baby, growing into a man. Learning obedience through sacrifice, dying on the cross and raised from the dead. He had to go through all those things just to save man. And to say anything otherwise, you're taking away from the, the, the true meaning of what he actually did to redeem man. Because we already know in the beginning, it doesn't say Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's just God. <laughs> God was walking in the cool of the day with Adam. So the scriptures is telling us that it's sin that causes separation. We know that sin causes separation in so many ways. It even caused God to be separate from himself. The same way it causes those who choose not to receive Christ as their Lord and Savior to be separated from God for all eternity. Okay? These are the things God would have to do to save man. Okay, don't let heretics, false prophets, like this false apostle here, Geno Jennings, don't let them deceive you and, and lead you down a path that where you don't have a true understanding in receiving the word, but taking man in his own fleshly opinion, just because he done and open up all these church buildings, that now you're receiving the word just because Geno Jennings said, because that's what a lot of his followers who come commenting on this channel, they don't have no word to rightly divide 
what I have said, the scriptures that I have given, all right? As I say, don't let your flesh write checks that your soul cannot cash in the afterlife. Devil does not get screwed on the deals he makes with men. And clearly he's made hack with this false prophet, Geno Jennings. 